SWR Virtual Resources Conference, May 2020. On the line, we have FYI Resources. FYI Resources is developing a high purity alumina operation in WA, securing an 80 million Australian dollar financing facility to bring its HBA project into fruition. A March 2020 definitive feasibility study for the HPA project, which includes the Cato Kaolin deposit northeast of Perth and a processing plant at Quinana, demonstrated the quality of the company's HPA strategy through excellent economic metrics. Following the DFS and the success of pilot plant trials, FYI has a high level of confidence in the technology and process flow sheet and the company's ability to produce a superior quality HPA product. On the line, we have Roland Hill. Roland is the managing director of FYI. He has extensive resource industry and investment, finance and funds management experience. He has been directly associated with the mining and exploration sector for more than 18 years in contracting roles and with companies including Western Mining Corporation, Normandy Poseidon and Crescent Gold. Prior to Crescent Gold, Roland held roles with several Australian and international stockbroking firms and investment banks before taking a senior role as a portfolio manager with Deutsche Bank. Over to you, Roland, and FYI. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. That's a, a, quite an introduction. Um, so, uh, everybody, welcome to FYI Resources. Uh, I'd like to thank NWR for uh, holding this uh, conference, um, particularly in this time. Uh, very interesting platform to do. So, uh, with further ado, I'd, I'd like to get on to the uh, presentation. Um, I'm very excited the fact that uh, we're holding this because it's the first opportunity to talk about our uh, our. Uh, funding and also our uh, feasibility studies since uh, COVID-19. So uh, if we can just go straight to it, um, just, uh, all important disclaimer uh, and our competent person statements. And then just moving over to the contents, um, I think uh, amongst some of the viewers, there'll be some current shareholders. There might be some new um, people that are thinking about uh, investing. I, I certainly encourage that, but there's also some people that might want to just understand the industry a little bit. So I'm gonna broadly cover uh, um, the uh, basic points and uh, the background, but then get into more of the, the um, more important points of the finance as, and um, DFS, as I mentioned. So just a quick cover of what we're hoping to achieve today. So in essence, FYI um, resources, what we'd like to portray is a couple of key pillars of um, differentiation of um, uh, our company versus other peers and, and also in the market. And I hope that's one uh, message that comes across loud and clear uh, to, to potential investors. Uh, and that is um, our, our strength of our strategy, the quality of our product um, and um, the, the um, strategy altogether, uh, the advantages that we have uh, amongst in, within the product and our, our peers. Um, we're also going to establish a little bit about the growth and our opportunity, um, particularly also want to focus in on the economics of uh, our project, the, the uh, Kadu HVA project and its meaning within the DFS and what that means to investment uh, potentials. Um, and um, I, I think at the end of the day, really the, the, the key message, the takeaway points is, is quality, quality and quality. We spent two and a half years on this uh, project and I, I think that's very evident uh, where we're coming from. The last 12 months have been exceptional for us. We have a number of key achievements. I won't go through all of them, but um, certainly the completion of the DFS and uh, the financing are the two major points that uh, I'd like to discuss. Please look at those in your leisure. Uh, this uh, um, presentation will be on our website and um, in WR will also post that. So at your leisure, please look at that. In summary, uh, the DFS um, economic study, the metric summary uh, just is here in front of you in the slides. Uh, the, the DFS was released in March uh, just uh, this year. So only just released, first opportunity really to discuss it at a public level. And some of the key points that I'd really like to put out there is uh, amongst the, not only the quality that went into it, but um, uh, the level of detail. Uh, it's unfortunately we had to call it a DFS rather than a BFS, but the degree of engineering and, and meticulous study that went into it, certainly a BFS quality, we feel, but we can't call it that simply because we don't have an offtake 
uh, or revenue line to attach against it. But I'll explain that a little bit later and go into some of the, the key metrics within that. But highlighting uh, the DFS summary is our uh, NPV, um, $543 odd million dollars, um, in US terms. Uh, that's after tax and a 10% discount, so very conservative. Great IRR, fantastic payback period, uh, and some good cash flow. And because of this and the robustness of the DFS, it's starting to get a bit of traction in the market and interest from uh, institutions and uh, various parties to complete a funding package. So within uh, that goes to the next set um, and the attraction of our first and, and foremost uh, financing, uh, 80 million equity financing. Uh, done through GEM Finance. Um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, support for what we are trying to do. It's, it's a, a financing um, facility that probably doesn't suit a lot of day-to-day uh, -day, uh, funding, but however, for us, it's absolutely aligned with our key principles of development. So it'll, it'll dovetail, dovetail into our, our developments and uh, our, the balance of our financing packages nicely and um, will actually uh, augment uh, our, uh, the other finance options that we're actually in, uh, in discussions with at the moment. So just a bit of background, just quickly, uh, the Kadu Kalen project uh, here in WA, it's only about two hours drive uh, of Perth. Uh, I won't go into this in detail, but other than to say that it's in a fantastic jurisdiction and is all part and parcel of our fully integrated uh, project development. The fact that it's in WA, we're mining, and processing in WA, I, I think is a key aspect. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But the uh, 25 year um, financing around the DFS is included in our reserves. So our first, uh, well, 25 years is covered under reserves. Our first three years of production, and funnily enough, our payback period is also absolutely scrutinized. So absolute detail. And it's a matter of us understanding this geology is the first step to um, uh, uh, the product uh, recognition and, um, and also the, the quality and, and um, purity that comes from this, this particular project. High purity itself, um, there's a lot of talk around about that. It's probably a le lesser known than the graphites and the lithiums of the world. Nonetheless, it's uh, super important in a lot of applications. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about those, but uh, the key characteristics of this particular product make it very attractive uh, to the customer um, and to the various um, applications that it goes in. And key to it is the um, uh, consumer demand that's increasing year on year at an incredible rate, around about 17%. In fact, uh, as average, that will, will make this uh, product a well sought after uh, supply. And indeed, it is it's our intention to meet that demand as it grows. So in terms of that market and the market overview, uh, this is just a quick summary. Again, um, people have seen this slide before, so I won't go into a great detail, but um, it's good to see that there's uh, uh, two, two really quite distinct markets. One is a traditional supply, which just goes into LED and some traditional uh, products. The other one is the I suppose where the sizzle from this project is going to come from or this particular product, uh, and that is in the uh, lithium ion batteries, electric vehicle markets. Um, but as you see on that graph, uh, a very stable uh, undersupply of, of traditional markets and the top two elements there is where the growth is that supports the, the um, high annual year on year growth. In terms of the overview, this is just one snapshot. As I say, there's a quite a lot of applications that it goes into. Uh, the battery, uh, the, the um, graphic on the left, uh, it's particularly used uh, within the battery cell makeup as uh, um, the separator, the coating of the separator between the anode and cathode. And it's ideally placed for this due to its uh, specific characteristics, um, et cetera. So we'll see uh, this, this sector increase rapidly and um, Whilst we see that it's uh, this is the upside, we also rely on uh, the LED market, which takes up about 60% of the current market. We will be addressing both these markets with our offtake, uh, focusing on both. They're quite separate and distinct markets and requiring separate um, uh, servicing. 
and but we we see that we can address that with our production uh, total production is about 8,000 uh, tons per annum uh, and we can see that fitting into uh, the current uh, demand cycle uh, extremely well particularly out to the growth of um, the HPA demand uh, 2025 and and beyond so uh, just a quick uh, couple of graphics in support of uh, the growth assumptions that were done. Uh, we do use and utilize uh, a number of very um, key and respected uh, research groups in, in the formulation of these uh, forecasts. Uh, and the uptake of the um, HPA by application is an interesting one. Uh, we've managed to be a little bit more conservative than probably these graphs uh, suggest, but it, nonetheless, it's an important target and great figure for us to uh, address in the future once we're up and running. Um, the, the lighting and the LEDs in particular, as I mentioned, underpins our growth and we'll support this. They are tremendous growth uh, figures, but again, re reliable numbers and ones which we, we would like to meet uh, in the future with, with our production. So in terms of our development uh, and the, the technology and the overall de-risking of the project, we, we see this as, as being one of our key and distinguishing uh, features uh, and differential, differential points uh, against the peers. The fact that we've gone to a lot of time, bother, effort and expense in terms of our product development uh, and it's incredible uh, uh, thing to be in that we've uh, achieved some incredible successes, including uh, five nine production, but our average production uh, as, as supported through uh, all our test work and our piloting that again under, underpins our DFS is really seen um, as the pinnacle through our pilot plant and production. So a lot of work being done there uh, and that validates our, our work and supports our financial forecasts and the DFS study as a whole. So what are we actually trying to achieve with this product? I, I suppose it's, a, it's an important point and, and one that needs to be underpinned. I won't go into it a great uh, depth and detail again because I could talk about this all day and I'm very passionate about this, but it's all uh, involved with uh, delivering a better product, a higher purity, better quality product than is currently available in the market. The market is actually uh, addressed currently by uh, uh, aluminium uh, that is uh, hydrolyzed, made into HVA crystals that comes from bauxite. Uh, there's a lot of issues around the production of that, um, certainly environmental and carbon footprint issues, but it is a very expensive and um, uh, involved uh, uh, method of production. Um, it, it's the, the method itself is probably over 100 years old uh, and it's very expensive in terms of OPEX and CAPEX to produce. What we're aiming to do is replace that through innovation and a new feedstock, which is the kaolin clay, specifically designed uh, um, uh, flow sheet for the production of this particular uh, product. And we see that we can deliver it uh, more uh, efficiently, uh, economically cheaper and more reliable, uh, which is a key point to the customer. Uh, point of customer, um, they absolutely rely on a consistent supply. Our Spreadsheet, sorry, our, our flow sheet that um, supports all this. This, this is uh, actually uh, uh, technology that's been adapted, uh, evolved, innovated by FYI over the last two years. A lot of trials, a lot of um, uh, vari variation work has gone into this and we've finally uh, settled on a flow sheet that we see that does work um, and that was validated in the uh, pilot plant. Uh, quite a simple flow sheet. Uh, the components within that, there's quite a little bit of, um, if I can say, oh, beg your pardon, uh, IP. Uh, quite, quite a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and learning has gone into that. Um, but uh, in, in essence, uh, in, a, in a chemical uh, sense, it's, it's absolutely uh, straightforward, uh, but there's a lot of tricks to it. And uh, we think that we've, we've nailed the, uh, well, absolutely nailed it. So. Um, uh, the process we see as being key to our whole uh, economics. 
In terms of the market and the market engagement, we're spending a lot of time on this. Uh, it's, it's, it's equally as important as developing uh, a first class uh, uh, process flow sheet and the production. The market uh, angle is, is absolutely critical and we're spending a lot of time in doing that. Uh, we're, our engagement is at all different levels of different jurisdictions on different applications. It's getting quite involved but it's exciting the fact that now we're coming uh, close to the end of our, um, our, our development journey, now we're into our marketing journey and um, we, we're starting to see it bearing fruit. So very happy uh, at this stage of our development. Another key point, and we see as a, as a, as a dramatic uh, distinguishing feature of, of our strategy, uh, and that is the uh, uh, integrated uh, approach to, to the um, development and production of HPA. Uh, we've selected Kwinana uh, as being an ideal uh, location for that. Obviously, uh, we're, we're looking at a whole WA integrated approach, so very parochial to WA, but it's a great jurisdiction to be in, and there's a lot of reasons for us to be sitting in Konana. Uh, I don't think the market has quite caught on to, to this fact, and the, um, but being a proponent down in Konana is going to mean um, absolute buckets uh, to us. We see as it being gold, so uh, we're very keen to um, uh, get uh, our our. Uh, designated plot there um, up and running as, as soon as possible. Uh, I should say it's uh, it's in terms of environment um, and permitting, uh, we're well advanced on that. Um, and in fact, it's an overlay the WA government has. So we don't see too many restrictions in terms of getting our full permitting there in the very near future. In terms of our, our timeline, um, yes, uh, the world's been um, impacted by this COVID-19 and the lockdowns, but we don't see that it's going to affect our timeline too much. We understand that um, you know, our counterparties are, are obviously going to be affected a little bit, so we, we'd probably see a little bit of slowdown in terms of their response. But um, as you can see from that timeline, we've had a very busy last couple of years and we're looking forward to a very busy next couple of years. The key points there, I suppose, is, that, is the delivery of our DFS right in the middle there, um, so uh, February, March of uh, this year and the associated financing, but we're looking forward to a fairly rapid uh, development program uh, commencing from now. Uh, just a little bit of a quick corporate overview, um, just a bit of capital structure and our past performance and just like to make a, uh, probably a, a pertinent point there that uh, the board and management are particularly um, uh, well motivated to see this succeed, sitting there at just uh, under 18% of the current stock. So we, we'd like to see that um, whatever we're doing is gonna bear fruit and uh, finally that we'll get some traction in the market. So in terms of um, our, our entry into emerging growth sector, we see that we're ideally placed. Again, I won't go through all these points individually. You can go through them separately and, and um, see for yourself, but we've nailed a number of key points that we see are a, a, a large uh, value add and um, uh, credibility points to our, our strategy. So in summary, um, I'd just like to thank uh, you all for your time. And um, if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, answer those for you now. Thank you so much for all of that presentation. That was really comprehensive. You did talk a bit about strategic financing. Could you please talk us through the rationale about why someone would be interested in FYI? <clears throat> yeah, certainly. Um, uh, through our DFS, and I'll just quickly flip back to that, uh, the summary, um, what we've presented there is uh, a, a fantastic investment opportunity uh, you know, the, the rewards at this early stage are immense for uh, an early starter or an early investment. And through the development, we aim to um, uh, build upon that credibility. But the key points of that NPV, uh, the long uh, mine life, uh, the quick payback, three and a half years, all those metrics make it absolutely attractive to early stage investment. Um, and that, that's for a, a a 
time point right now. But uh, further down the track, along with early investments, such as 80 million uh, investments, um, it's making it more at attractive as, as time goes on to other packages that will actually formulate our full capital amount. So, so it, not only is it a, a perfect timing now for an investment, but in the long run, um, these metrics make it ideal for it. And okay. since the pilot plan to run roll into, have you sent any of the optimised samples to interested parties or offtake partners? And if so, have you received any feedback on them? Yes, it will indeed. So part and parcel of, of the pilot plant was indeed to um, uh, validate our DFS numbers uh, and support that on a technical sense. It also gave us the opportunity to produce uh, marketable parcels that we could send off to um, qualified customers for their test work. We have indeed done that and the fact is that they're, they're in the process of qualification now. Uh, the, the, the point that these guys are, uh, it's a it's a involved process in terms of the qualification. So we, we just have to be a little bit patient in terms of timing. We're doing all we can to assist. Uh, some of the feedback that we've had back um, uh, at an early stage is that uh, the, the, the product itself is, is very good, uh, suits some of their criteria, particularly. Um, and we've even had uh, elevated uh, interest from a number of groups that want a little bit more uh, additional work and, and a bit more development work around our product. And the, the key point here is that it is our own product that we can deal with. So uh, in terms of uh, this engagement, it's, it's direct. Um, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to be dealing with some of these groups. Um, they are large groups uh, and take quite a bit of uh, time to convince um, uh, and for them to understand our product and who we are. Mm -hmm. but, um, the product speaks for itself at this stage. So yes, we, we will engage with this process, yeah. So it's perhaps a little bit early to say that you've got offers that you're working through from some of these groups, but the talks are advancing. Yes, it is, it is far too early. Yeah, it, it, um, it is quite a, um, uh, a process. Uh, the duration depends on which client and customer that you're talking to. There's various uh, groups and, uh, and they go to various degrees of examination of the product. Uh, but it, it, it is um, a little bit too early. We, we do have some strong intentions and um, you know, we, we will see that we'll build on those, but yeah, far too early at this stage for anything definitive. Well, thanks for joining us today, Roland, and presenting on behalf of FYI. Oh, absolute pleasure. And thank you. Stop it, right? <laughs>